Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Laura Canfield Show. Thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited that my good friend Anna Maria Vasquez is back with us. It's been, it's been a while, but I'm so glad she's back with us. And especially at this time now when I have a puppy. So it's like, it just makes, it just happened that way. But I'm like, yay. Um, but I'm so glad that, you know, you're all here to, to join with us today because Anna Maria always has wonderful, wonderful information, wonderful teachings, wonderful wisdom. And she's so so connected, what you will find as well. And so today um, we are talking about healing your natural rhythm through nature, animals, and numerology. So this is a whole new topic that we've never had on the show before, so all brand new. And for those of you who may not know Anna Maria, which you know I find it hard to believe, but just in case, um, Anna Maria is a multi-sensory animal and, na and nature intuitive. And she is a natural energy reader and interpreter of sorts. And she lifts the veil between what's happening in the 3D world and the energetic patterns behind it. As a multisensory intuitive, she's able to tune in and see the places where your limiting beliefs are getting you stuck in old ways of being and showing up in the world and how that's affecting the animals that you love. Anna Maria has a profound connection with nature and animals and specializes in working with them because they act as mirrors to our inner landscape and help us make shifts that on our own, we wouldn't do. Anna Marie is also a certified intuitive strategist and serves on the faculty of the Academy for the Soul. And today, like I said, we are, we are talking about healing your natural rhythms through nature, animals, and numerology. And so we'll find out what that means. But part of what we're going to talk about and learn is we're going to learn about your natural rhythm in order to shift those lower vibrations of feeling disconnected, frazzled, confused, and anxious about your future, which, you know, <laughs> we do tend to have that sometimes. We're going to incorporate animal wisdom and the insight of the tarot to uncover your natural rhythm and cycles and explore a deeper spiritual soul connection with nature, animals, and numbers. And Anna Maria will do live natural rhythm readings on this call to see which element, direction, or animal is showing up to help shift you into your own natural rhythm. I can hardly wait because this is all so fascinating and so interesting and so um, different and varied. I mean, we're using numerology, we're using tarot, we're using the elements and so much more. So I'm so excited. So, <laughs> and Maria, welcome back to the show. Thank you so much for having me. And I am so grateful to, that you have created this platform where we can have these soulful conversations because it's important as we're remembering who we are and why the heck we're here. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And, you know, and uh, at this time, especially, I find that, you know, this 2018 has been a difficult year for a lot of people, including myself. And so we have a lot of questions, right? And sometimes we do get out of sync, right, with who we are, with our rhythms, um, with sometimes even with what is it that we want, you know, and... Um, and I think, you know, now as we're heading into the end of this year, some of us are already starting to think about 2019. <laughs> what is that going to be like, right? And so can we start off, I guess, by first talking about what you mean by natural rhythm? Right. Well, th that's a great question because from the time we're born, we are constantly trained out of our natural rhythm and asked to contort to other things, you know, other ways of being. And if you look just at our lives, you know, most people are getting up uh, to an alarm clock before mm -hmm. the sun is coming up and they are heading into artificial environments where it's, you know, forced air and, you know, temperature controlled and there's all sorts of radio microwaves and EM, other EMFs that are going on all of the time. So we're constantly uh, contorting ourselves to unnatural rhythms. We don't even really remember what our own natural rhythm is. And what happens when we do that on a continual basis is we start to exhibit those pieces that you're talking about, you know, the confusion, the feeling stuck, the feeling lost, the feeling irritable, the not really feeling certain of our centeredness. Mm -hmm. And so if we have to live in those artificial environments, what we need to do then is bring in as much of the natural world as we can, because we are nature. And everything in nature reminds itself of this natural rhythm. We've got 
seasons, we've got flow. Even if you don't have, if you live someplace where there's not seasons, there's still a cycle that's happening. And the earth herself releases different signals to all the living beings about different facets of life and the cycle. But we're so far removed that we miss out on those signals and we don't fully receive it. And we're missing out on so much when we do that. So we can use you know, our own numerology, our own numbers, and we can find out what kinds of teams of helpers we have in the animal world and in the natural world that will help us remember about our own natural rhythm and to approach life from our own natural rhythm, even if we're being exposed to everything else. It's that coming back to our center. Mm -hmm. And that is so important that coming back to our center more and more and, um, and, and, and easier ways of coming back to our center when we do get, you know, sidetracked. So like, you know, for example, today I, I took Neo for a walk and we were in the park and um, I'm in Vienna, Austria, by the way, I'm not sure if, if you know that or if I told you that, but so we were walking in Stad Park and it's like, it was absolutely gorgeous. The sun was shining, the leaves are falling, you know, and it's so peaceful and he was happy and it's like, oh my goodness, this is so beautiful. This is so, ha you know, I was in such gratitude, right? It's like, thank you, thank you, thank you, you know? And that for me sometimes um, is enough to bring me back right to 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 the, the center of me and so i i do love being outside you know which i know my husband finds hard to believe because i when i you know i'm on my couch working all the time but to get me outside you know it's like but once i'm out there it's like oh i just love it especially out in the woods out in nature you know and we were there yesterday we went up in the woods and it was like so i took pictures it was so nice you know and that connection you know it's it's just it's like it's always there but we have to take ourselves there. Absolutely. And we know that there's so much more going on than what meets the eye when we're out there. We feel great, not just because we're away from our computer or away from people that are bugging us or anything, but the natural realm emits those negative ions mm -hmm. on a continual basis. And the trees are emitting aerosols of their essence all the time. And any of us who use essential oils, mm -hmm. you know, go in the forest and it's like a free diffuser. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so it's that those negative ions are what's helping bring us back into balance in that physical and energetic realm. And so when we can bring our consciousness and our attention to the auspiciousness of our own rhythms and cycles, you know, that are based on our own blueprint, we can come back to that remembrance and we can take it with us you know even if we can't get out to the forest mm -hmm. we can come back to our center and say okay i know that this animal is with me you know this particular month or this particular year or has been with me my whole lifetime and so i can call on that animal to source me and and lend me the energy the power that it has in certain areas that i may not have and in return I am vowing to be a guardian, to be a protector of the animals, of all of the animals. And that's where that energy exchange happens. Hmm. Awesome. Beautiful. Awesome. I, I love the way you said that. And, you know, and so, you know, the, the, the animals are always sharing with us if we're willing to receive, right? So their wisdom is always, they're always willing to share, but we're, we, you know, sometimes close ourselves off. So can you talk a little bit about how we can incorporate animal wisdom, animal um, medicine, uh, the powers, uh, and even their qualities um, in our lives to, you know, to what, some balance our cycles, you know, to, to, to help us to come back to center. And also about the tarot, I'm, I'm confused about that. Or like, I'm like, what? <laughs> How are we using the tarot and animal wisdom to come back to our natural rhythm and natural cycle? Right. So we know in general, when animals cross our paths or come into our experience, that there are messages that they're there to share with us and we can tap into that. So we can learn about, you know, symbology and all of those things. But when we come in, back into our own natural rhythm, 
And so our numerology will start that based on our birth date. Hmm. We can determine who our totem animal is. So let me just put a little aside here Mm because there's totem animals, there's power animals, there's Mm -hmm. spirit animals, you know, then there's your dog, you know, your new Mm -hmm. little puppy. So what does all of this mean? So a totem animal is an animal that comes to you through birth in some way, either based on your own birth date, that numerology points to a particular animal, or if you come from a particular clan, um, you know, my last name is Vasquez, and it's a Basque name, uh, a Basque word that means gathering of the crows. So mm-hmm. crow and those black birds are one of my family totems then. Okay. And we know like in the Pacific Northwest, you'll see totem poles, and mm-hmm. each of those tell a different story for that particular tribe and those animals, those totem animals. So anything that is linked to you by birth would be a totem animal. Mm-hmm. A power animal are, I think of them as like our, our BFFs. You only have a handful of them. And for animal lovers, we're like, oh my God, I love all the animals. They're all my power animal. <laughs> That's not necessarily true. Most people have maybe five to 10, even on the lower end of that, of power animals, animals that have shown up for them over and over in their life in one way or another. It doesn't mean that a lion walked into your backyard, but you've surrounded yourself with lion art or, Mm -hmm. you know, pictures of lions. Or you can have dreams too, right? Of animals. Yes, exactly. They can be showing up in your dreams in different times. Mm -hmm. And then spirit animals are, you know, let's say I'm out and I see a rabbit. That is a spirit animal, like a messenger animal that comes to share Uh, you know, in that case, probably a message about fertility or being able to make quick and decisive moves. Mm -hmm. And then based on what I was thinking about what I was asking the universe for in before I met that rabbit, that's going to feed the message. It's going to explain the message to me. So we know we can use all of that every day. But as we're going into this new year, you know, 2019, mm-hmm. we can go in with the knowledge of who our totem animal is. Because I can feel everyone leaning in going, oh my God, I wonder who mine is. <laughs> and I bet some of you already kind of have inklings to it. When yeah. I do the sessions and I share that with people, they're like, oh my gosh, that makes so much more sense now. So we can find out based on your numerology, not just who your totem animal is, but who is the animal that wants to be your sponsor is what I call it for 2019 because numbers and cycles are always moving. So are the animals that are with us on a yearly and a monthly basis as well. So we will find out uh, which animal is with you based on your numerology for this 2019 year that wants to come and sponsor that year. So that's one animal that you, that's the second animal then that you would have on your team going into 2019, your totem animal, and then your sponsor animal. Then we can look at, based on each month of the year, what animal is showing up for you. And all of this, this is where the tarot comes in. We do the numerology. I work with the tarot very differently than most people do. And I do it based on numerology to determine which aspects of the tarot are coming up. Mm -hmm. And then I work with Ted Andrews' book, The Animal Tarot, and we're able to cross-reference those pieces and find which animal is here for you in January, which animal is here, you know, with you for each of the months. And what people find when they do those readings is that they have a better grasp of how to show up in that month. So let's say that turtle is sponsoring you in February. Mm -hmm. So you know, hmm, no matter what shows up this month, turtle's energy of going within, of slowing down, that's going to be my best move in interacting with the energy that shows up for me and to have a roadmap that takes you through the whole year based on your own blueprint. It's not just Anna Maria said this, Mm -hmm. your numbers said these animals are here to support you. And these are the qualities that are going to assist you and support you to show up in your highest self way throughout the year. Awesome. No, thank you. That was so amazing because I had never thought of that obviously you know because I wasn't focused on animals the past couple years but I I didn't even know that there was an animal tarot and you know and just looking at how 
different animals could be your sponsors even for each month because let's face it, uh, right now everything changes so fast <laughs> that each month is totally different than, than the month before and, and it's never what you might expect, right? So, um, and what I found from people too is, you know, we all are on our own path and we've, we're having our own experiences, but there are those times when we're like, I don't know, I don't know which of my guides are here right now. Mm -hmm. And so when we can go through based on your numerology and say, you know, it's this animal, it's that animal, you can then with certainty say, all right, I might not know anything else, but I know whale is here with me in May, you know, to support me and diving deep and tapping into my primal ancient wisdom that I inherently have. Mm -hmm. So we can, we can move through life differently. And then we know, you know, let's say whale did come in. Well, whale is a creature of the water. So we're honoring those elements, that element of water with the flow, you know, how often do we want to rigidly control everything in life mm -hmm. and dictate how it works? how it you know shows up and that's just not what that's not how this works <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah no no i get that too yeah because you know we we're such control freaks right and we're trying to control how the universe is going to contribute to us or, or what's going to show up and, and when we're in allowance and in the flow it's even more magical than what than we could imagine right absolutely <laughs> so um i just wanted to be uh clear and, and just for everybody else too just a little clarification so uh the totem animal is one that's with you from birth right yes. so for yes. example so for me um i think my <laughs> i think my totem animal um is a peacock only because uh growing up and in, in in my village where i was there was always this lame peacock and it's like he was always there you know always there Right. And um, so I think, oh, he's probably my totem. And then I've, I've had dreams of wolves many times, you know. So it's like they're part of my team, but also because I'm a practicing shaman. So wolves are part of that system. Right. And then, you know, what about things like, you know, in Hinduism, there's so many animals, you know, with all the gods and goddesses. Right. So like for me, the lion is very uh special <laughs> you know so it's like it's so it's so it's so weird you know yesterday we were at this at the uh, out in the country and we were looking at these cows and i swear to god i kid you not <laughs> the cow was looking at neo for a long time they were having this staring fest right and then he looked at me the cow and he bowed i mean he literally bowed and was like, oh my God, I didn't, I was going to tell my husband, was like, how do I tell this? You know, it's like, how do I, you know, explain that, you know? And, um, it's like, and cows are also very, um, very much revered, you know, in, in, in Hinduism. Right. So it's like, <sighs> so what does that mean? Right. So, it, so does that mean that that would be a spirit animal because he came to me you know, or she, sorry, she came to me just, uh, you know, in passing. Well, that would be considered a spirit animal. And I mean, that is a phenomenal experience. And what I'm really getting when I was checking in there is it was about gratitude to you for, for rescuing Neo, you know, mm -hmm. like Neo was telling him like, I don't know, you know, like I said, he's still mm -hmm. trying to figure everything out, but he does know that he went from a not so great situation to a really phenomenal situation. Mm -hmm. So right. uh, that gratitude being shown in your connection with your lineage, you know, to the, those cows, I'm sure weren't being kept as sacred cows. However, they're all connected and they would be able to recognize that right. part. And I've no, you know, it, when we show kindness, um, and that collaboration with the animal kingdom, there's so many phenomenal stories of gratitude that come through from the animals because they're just blown away. And so all, some of the other animals that you named, you know, like when we, um, when I would put, if I, if we did a session, I was able to pull your numbers, yeah. we could yeah. find out exactly which totem animal. And then we could also feel in and see which of those were, are your power animals. Cause right. I get that you've got some crossover in there as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, cool. Awesome. And I just, I just wanted to, you know, have that clear for me in my head and, hopefully give some clarity to everybody else uh, who's watching or listening or w will watch later. So, um, 
And with, so with the, with the numerology, you basically just use our birth date, right? Yep. It's based yep. on the birth date? Okay, cool. Wow. It's, just, it's like there's so many wonderful things that you can uncover from using the tarot, using the numerology, using the elements. And um, yeah, can you, can you tell us a little bit more about, you know, for example, when we want to get back to our natural rhythm, right? And we don't have a pet, but you know, there are always, there's lots of animals in the world, but how, how do we, how do we work with the nature world, nature kingdom to help us bring us back to center, back to our natural rhythm, especially if we can't go out into the forest? Right, exactly. It's so important for us to remember, first of all, that we are nature. You know, like we, as humans, we moved out of the woods and we were like, we're never going back, you know, and we, we made it such a distinction between us and nature, but we are nature. Everything in us is nature. And so the first part is just to recognize our part in this and to recognize that we're shifting from doing things to the animals, to being in collaboration with them. Mm -hmm. That just because, you know, they're the one on the other end of the leash doesn't mean that they're not the master. They're not the guru really there in that space. You know, um, my dog, Astro, the Great Dane, he has been one of my toughest teachers, actually, because, again, he is committed. Our animals are committed to showing up to help us remember who we truly be in any place that we have some stickiness with that. They're going to show up and they're they either emotion, uh, either physically or behaviorally in different ways. And so you can look at your own guardian animals, but if you don't have access to that, you can just see, even in cities, people come across animals, you know, there's mm -hmm. pigeons, uh, <laughs> which talk about coming back to your heart. There, there's rats in cities, there's squirrels, there's all of these other animals that you can come across, birds galore. And right. birds remind us to get out of our head mm -hmm. and transcend all of that thinking so that we can really receive those divine downloads. So we can connect with the animals, you know, even just now with technology, streaming videos about mm -hmm. animals, mm -hmm. watching nature programs so that we really do remember our interconnection and our impact on animals because as humans, we're very hard on this planet and we keep animals, um, there, there's always pressure on the wildlife because of humans and where we are. And so mm -hmm. we have to come back into the remembrance that we're all in this together. It's not an us and them kind of piece. And that this um, animal tarot session allows you to bring different animals with you through each month, even if you don't have any living in you, you know, your direct or immediate area, you can still connect with the animals and the energy of the animals. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. And so now can you, you know, would you like to do some uh, natural rhythm readings? <laughs> yeah, so, so let, me just, rhythm, re, let me just give a little bit of setup so folks yeah. are totally sourced here. So the natural rhythm readings that I'm going to do are, are different than the animal tarot readings. The animal tarot readings are the sessions that I'm offering. So don't give me your birthday because I can't do math fast enough to figure <laughs> that out. And I don't have my cross-reference stuff. So that is specific for a, a private session, just you and me. Um, what I'm reading today is which element, animal, or even tree may want to come through. I'm really looking at which natural element wants to come through to source you today in getting back into your natural rhythm. Mm -hmm. awesome. So you can just say, read me or whatever, and I will see what's coming in for you. Awesome. So you can, um, you can either just, uh, hold on, you can either... Oh, raise your hand <laughs> or you can write in the chat or if you can't raise your hand, you can just unmute yourself and um, go ahead and ask a question because um, sometimes people on the phone don't know how to unmute and I don't know how to how they do it either for that matter. So if you would like to ask uh, for a reading, a natural rhythm reading, <laughs> um, go ahead, right? So um, I'll start off, you know, until until we get people because maybe they, you know, I don't know, maybe, they don't, maybe they're not sure what that means either. Because like, okay, so 
if I find out which element or which direction or which tree or animal is showing up to help me shift, how do I then work with them? Is my, is my That's next question. That's what I'll tell you. Oh, ah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Awesome. So let's start with you then. Let's start with you. What, let me take a deep breath. And when we take the breath, it allows you to get into your heart space and get centered and it allows me to get into my heart space so that I can tune in and get permission from your team to see what's going on mm -hmm. with you exactly. And what's coming through is the element of air. And that element of air in terms of coming back to the natural rhythm, it's very similar to the birds, you know, where we're mm -hmm. using that element to get above and over our mind, you know, like in shamanic practice, when we send up the smoke, you know, to send it up. Mm -hmm. So for you, it's bringing in that element of air in terms of the winds of change to blow out all the unimportant pieces that are getting in the way of you being in your natural rhythm because everything pulls on our attention and, and insists that it's the most important thing. Yeah. So if you yeah. can also honor that element of air by just breathing, that will bring you into your center and then you can call on the element of air to blow that other stuff right through. <laughs> okay, I love that. And you know, when it, whenever I think of the air element, I also think of spirit, you know, and of uh, connection, you know, like being connected to spirit as well, you know? So, <laughs> so it's like, yep, I need to meditate more. <laughs> it's what I'm getting. Yeah. Because, <laughs> you know, I, I'll be honest, since we've gotten Neo, um, my schedule's off. <laughs> right, exactly. It all changes. Yeah, it, it, my schedule's a little bit off, so it's like, um, yeah, we'll get back on track, I think, by tomorrow. This is what I'm looking at. But yeah, you know, so many of us, though, get bogged down in our heads, right, in our thoughts. And we cannot see the, sometimes the bigger picture or to rise above those thoughts. Or, and those distractions. So that's very, um, yeah, that's a good one for me. <laughs> and I see some folks wrote in um, mm -hmm. asking for some. So I see uh, Miss Nancy, I would love a reading uh, to Ana Maria. Mucho love, mucho love to you, Miss Nancy. And uh, my Zen Cowboys send in big hugs to you too. So let me feel in here and let me see what's coming through for you. You know, Nancy, it's actually a direction that's coming in and it's the direction of the West and the direction of the West has to do, it's got all sorts of cool aspects, but the one that's coming through for you specifically is integration. So, you know, you've been the dutiful student, you've read, you've learned, you've put in your hours, all of that. Now it's time for you to integrate it. And what's your flavor? Put it all together so that it's a big Nancy pie that you give to the world, you know, because that's, that's what it is. You, you've learned from some of the best. I'll include myself in there too. And, and now it's time to put it all together. And here's my, your Nancy gumbo, because that's your flavor of delivering. So it's about integration. It's about this, um, the, the direction of the West is also related to um, that eldership time in our life when we're stepping into our wise woman time. So what's your wise woman gumbo you're offering the world? Awesome. Yeah, love that. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> Who else has a question? It looks like Dawn has one. Mm -hmm. uh, read me, please. <laughs> I like that. Okay, Dawn, let's check in. You know, Dawn, what came in right away for you? Hold on, there's two pieces. I was going to go one way and then they held me up. All right, take another breath. So I haven't experienced this for, but it's a rainbow coming in for you, Dawn. Um, and as I ask about, you know, okay, so what does this rainbow have to do with her natural rhythm? This is for you working with color therapy, actually, um, to bring yourself, you know, uh, into your natural rhythm. So say you're sitting at your desk in the afternoon and you are feeling uh, you know, that afternoon drag, bring in that yellow color 
or whichever color, when you look at a rainbow, I would definitely have a rainbow nearby you so that you could reference or paint chips or something to pull on because color for you is just really big. There's a, a frequency, a harmonic involved with color for you that's very healing. So bring that in to help you with your natural rhythm as you go through the day. Maybe in the morning you need a different color than at night when you're needing, you know, like I'm seeing this deeper eggplant color coming through. So meditate on color. Very interesting. I would have never brought that one in on my own. <laughs> mm -hmm. Awesome. So how was that for you, Don? All right. What else have we got? What else is coming up? We've got Annie would love a reading. Um, all right, let's see. Miss Annie, let me feel in and see what's coming in for you. You know, Annie, what's coming in for you is swan. Um, and there's two aspects to that. One, it's, you know, swan <laughs> of this gracefulness of really holding your head high and being in your gracefulness. Um, but also we're talking about an animal that works with the element of air as well as the element of water. So for you, this is about not just picking one, like, you know, it's almost like calling in groups. So we need that element of air. We need that element of water and we need that bird energy of swan to come in to help with, this graceful transition to help you bridge this gap between what you know and what you're actually able to show up with, you know, cause we know, we all know <laughs> that there's a higher, more enlightened aspect of us. Does that always show up? Is that what we always present? Maybe. <laughs> so call on that swan and call on those elements to help bring a little more grace and ease to you in this transition. Oh, Dawn wrote back in and she said, thank you. Yes, I have been incorporating color more in my life. That sounds perfect. Thank you. I've also been really drawn to amethyst and, and the eggplant fits right in there. Oh my goodness, Dawn, thank you for the feedback on that. That's so <laughs> That's awesome. You are so well connected. You know, it's like you like you always are spot on. I love that. I love oh, that. Look, he's like, I just want to be close to you, mama. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good boy. And my boy just wants to go away. He's like, I really want to go out there. <laughs> mm. So let's see, we've got Nicole. And she says, Oh, I've been listening on the phone. Can you read me pretty please? <laughs> All right, Nicole, let's see what's coming on for you with this natural rhythm. You know, Nicole, it's the moon. And I love that because, you know, we're talking um, with the animal tarot about a monthly aspect. Well, the moon provides us a monthly aspect because we're affected. All living things are affected by the moon. And science doesn't completely understand why or how, but it definitely happens. So for you, um, Nicole, I would start looking up and start paying attention. You know, I, I have a moon wisdom program actually that allows you to track those kinds of things. So start just looking up right now. We're in a quarter moon phase, which means the moon looks like it's half. And which means the reason it's called quarters is because it's a quarter of the way through its whole cycle. But when we've got that hard edge, what happens is we're asked to look at things that are bugging us and take inspired action on it. Oh, and Nancy wrote back in too. Miss Nancy she says, my reading made sense too. Time for me to make my own wise woman gumbo. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I love that, Nancy. That's so great. <laughs> I love the wise woman gumbo. Mm -hmm. It makes yeah. so much sense for Nancy. <laughs> and that's the thing, right? Sometimes when we, you know, when we're not in a rhythm, we're not actually not even showing up as, as fully as we could, right? Right. 
We're definitely out of our power. And that's why it feels confused. That's why it feels foggy. That's why we can feel irritated more often. We can feel all of those just like, I don't really know. I just don't know, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's because we're, we, you know, again, we got to think, do I always invite people to do a whole life audit? Look around, what's going on, you know? What's going on you, in you, and around you? What's the vibration of it? Is it helping you be the light that you are? Or is it scrambling the messages? The food that we eat is so vitally important to us, and so much of it is compromised. So we really need to be making wise choices. And the beauty is, when we make wise choices for ourselves, we are typically making really wise choices for the planet mm -hmm. and we're supporting those animals and the plants that are there for us unconditionally. And, you know, it's so funny because I was never a food person. I never really cared what I ate. I never, you know, it didn't, didn't matter. But um, I guess six to eight weeks ago, my husband started changing his diet, you know, what he eats and we eat really healthy. And so then I came back from Canada and like, we don't eat any processed food whatsoever. It's always fresh, you know, and it's always, and hardly ever even leftovers. It's always freshly made every day, nothing frozen unless we freeze it ourselves, you know, and it, it makes a huge difference. I, you know, I, 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 I was, I don't, I didn't put any value in it, right? But Who told now. us? We wouldn't know. And the thing is, is these food colorings, the um, artificial sweeteners, um, there's so many different aspects of them that are, they're neurotoxins. Mm -hmm. They're and they scramble the messages. So if you're trying to connect in with the animals, one of the first things that I teach my students is clean up your diet, mm -hmm. you know, get more fruits and vegetables in there because we can flush out the toxins and we can open up the channels so that we can hear it looks like some other people oh annie wrote back in i love it when you guys give us feedback she says once again yay i have swans within a block of my home oh, <laughs> nice. I've been feeling that i need to sit down there as a matter of fact the crows you and red tail hawk have greeted me every day on the lamp post next to the pond in, instead of my, on my fence so spot on Yay. And then Sue says, I'm so ready to hear. My connection with nature is so deep and my rhythm is wanting balance more and more. All right, Sue, let's see. Um, oh, hold on. Before I go into yours, Sue, Nicole wrote in. She said, oh my goodness, that's so perfect. I'm a <laughs> cancer too. She's got a little moon symbol in there. <laughs> okay. So Miss Sue, let's feel in and see what's going on for you. Oh, Sue, right away. Element of fire. Um, this is that time, uh, you know, yes, use this fire to burn away. What is draining your energy? Because we have so many energy leaks in our life. And this is the perfect time as we're getting set and setting our intentions for this new year. Call on the element of fire. Maybe you even want to have a bonfire, but you can just energetically call on it and start to burn away the stuff that is not serving you. You know, even picture it like, Bless you. <laughs> when um, people ask you things, you know, like, well, be holding your torch, like, is this a yes or is this a no? You know, you, we got to make those decisions. They're going to support you. No, I'm burning that away. <laughs> no, you know, no more just weak, weak, uh, wishy washy boundaries. No more of that. None of that. So step into your element of fire. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that. Thank you. And of course, you know, I had to sneeze at that moment. So what is that? I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> moving energy. We're just moving energy here. Yep. Um, I'm trying to see. So you've talked about elements. You've talked about directions because I know you talked about direction for Nancy, maybe. And you talked about different animals. Um, just seeing, making sure we covered, you know, everybody, every aspect. Um, any any other questions coming up, people? Like I said, you can also raise your hand if you want to come on live and talk to Anna Maria. <laughs> it's always fun too. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Well, you know, it's so interesting. Just like you know, our ancestors, the ancient ones, knew to look up into the skies and look at what was happening astrologically. 
you know, we began to learn to look here, what's going on right here, what's going on around us, what's going on within us and our numbers, you know, our own birth date and then how our birthday interacts with each month of an upcoming year. All of that, it, it bridges that heaven and earth piece and brings it together so that we can live it. And that's what I love, finding that sweet spot where, you know, the science meets the spirituality and it gives us practical ways to live this embodiment because it can feel so overwhelming sometimes. I mean, just scroll through Facebook for 30 seconds yeah. and you're like, yeah. oh my gosh, I got to go lay down. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so it, it, it helps if we can come from an empowered space instead where we realize our connection, where we are all connected. And when we learn to collaborate with all of the natural realm, the animals, the rocks, the trees, all of it, the elements, the directions, we can create a different kind of manifestation in our life because of that interconnectedness. And it's time we remembered that as humans. So can you, can you give us a little example of the numerology part, like, uh, like a concrete example that you've seen or in your own life or somebody else's life where you've used the numerology in some way? That The biggest piece that I've seen, again, is having that roadmap because you will have, based on your numbers, an animal that corresponds with your numerology for each month. And so there was... Um, one member of my tribe who, who had this done for herself last year, uh, we'd seen there was all of these, um, there was like a four month period where it was about transformation, transformation, transformation. Mm -hmm. And it was like, huh, that's really interesting, you know? And so she stayed with each of the animals that were there to help. And she was able to uh, bit by bit move towards kind of a crescendo that happened where different relationships revealed themselves for what they truly were. And then she was stepping into, you know, I'm, I'm thinking now it was, it was either Swan or Hummingbird. Um, and they were like, and, or maybe it was both. And they were like month after month after all of this transformation. And it wasn't making sense when we were doing the reading like this time last year, mm -hmm. but when we got into August and we connected, she was like, you wouldn't believe how those animals really did each month it gave me an idea of what to expect, but more importantly, how to show up. And when the swan and the hummingbirds showed up, I knew, I knew that I was done with that inner work and I was stepping into you. And she said that really helped keep her going because you know what it's like, just because um, the relationship finally reveals itself for what it is. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that we're in joy about that. It's very yeah. painful, you yeah. know, most yeah. likely it's very painful. And we had a different intention. But when that happens and we can look forward and see how we're so supported, no matter what is going on, it changes everything. And when we realize that we've got, you know, an animal, multiple animals that have been with us since birth and these animals that are showing up, it's like, you know, they're on it. They're like, I'm clocking in. Here I am. You know, mm -hmm. bears here. You got all the resources you need within you. Let's find the sweetness of life together. Beautiful. I love it. Thank you. So I wanted to, can you, can you, yeah, let's see if there's any questions. And if not, we'll talk about the offer. I and mean, we, we've been talking about it vaguely off and on. Yeah. Any comments, questions, feedback? This is Sue. I'm not sure if it's the same Sue or a different Sue. Mm -hmm. um, let me just feel in here. Serious health issues from being out of rhythm. Um, I'm ready for a message back to self care fire. Thank you. That's it. Yes. Perfect. Um, but she does go on to ask about an animal to keep her connected. Hold on a second. She's also craving cayenne pepper um, on everything. So more of that fire you're right yeah. on. And you know, that, that's also back to circulation um, in our body. You know, our body mimics all of the elements too. So that's good. If you've got that and you've been having health issues, cayenne is one of the top healing plants to help your body get back into uh, regular circulatory function, even helping with blood pressures and all of these things. So kudos to you on that. Let me just feel in for you on 
on this animal. You know what's coming through for you real strong is raccoon. And one of the first things that we notice about raccoon is that mask. And there are times that we need to keep things under wraps. You know, you've been going through these health issues. You're bringing this fire element to ignite and burn away things, but keep it under wraps. You don't got to tell everyone because first of all, not everybody is part of your supportive tribe. Some of them signed up to help you remember who you are. And it doesn't always look pretty the ways that they help us remember that. So keep some things under wrap. You know, you're so open and authentic that you want to just put it out there, but it's not for everyone's ears. So raccoons really here, like your little partner in crime, keep, keep it under wraps for a little bit. And then you guys can, you know, get into the dexterity of things together. So call on raccoon for sure. It's awesome. <laughs> So I have somebody on their iPhone that has raised their hand. So I'm gonna unmute you. Do you wanna be on video or just audio? We'll find out. I'm assuming we'll, we'll find out. <laughs> yeah, all right, so hello. Okay, maybe I'll, do you wanna start your video? iPhone, because I have you on. Oh, I can hear something. Maybe. Maybe. Hello? It doesn't seem to be working, so I'm not getting any sound from you or video from you. I could just do a reading for her. Sure. Hold on, let's see what's going on here. You know what, uh, it's an aspect of uh, nature actually that's coming through and it's the natural landscape. It's um, lakes. It's not just the element of water. It's like a lake is what I'm seeing. Um, so, Take a second, take a breath, let me feel in, because I keep trying to go to water, and they're like, no, 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 we said lake. So I'm like, all right, let me listen deeper. Um, oh, of course, it's so funny how they say that. So just like on a lake, and just like what I was saying, there's surface, and what you see on the surface is one thing, but there's a whole other world underneath that when you go deeper. So for you at this point to get into that natural rhythm, first of all, sitting on the edge of where water meets land is a very potent spot energetically. So for you to go and sit there and ask that question of that lake, I mean, don't even say the element of water because they're so specific with you about the metaphor of the lake and the depth and going deep and the different... Um, just how there's so much more going on. So get yourself to a lake. And if you can't get to a lake, then get to a video of a lake where you can see yourself sitting there and bring in that contemplation for yourself. The question is, what's going on under the surface? Because when, we're, when we are cut off from our natural rhythm, we're just trying to keep a lid on everything. We're just trying to keep all the balls in the air. And so we have no time. Ain't no one got no time to be looking under the surface at that point. So you're being called. This is time. Ask yourself, what's going on under the surface? And it may feel uncomfortable, but that's your freedom. That's the way through it. And it doesn't have to be the old way of, you know, trauma, drama. You can notice those pieces and call on the element of water. For you, I would be calling on any of the aquatic animals since they keep bringing you back to lake. <laughs> Call on the aquatic animals because they get their nourishment from going deep in the water. And that's what you're needing. Awesome. Let us know how that resonates with you. Um, all right. So I just want to take a moment to talk about the special offer. So if you're on the live page, you can just click on special offer if you're not. And if you're looking or watching some other time, you can just go to alara.at forward slash show forward slash Anna Maria, all one word. So this is about healing your natural rhythm through animals and numerology, the animal tarot, personalized ancient wisdom based on your numerology. Um, and it's a personal session, right? With, with you, Anna Maria. Mm-hmm. 
It's a private 30 minute session. So, you know, you, some of you experience how powerful it can be just a couple seconds of me tuning in for you. Now imagine what it's like when I've got 30 minutes where I'm focused on you. When you register for the session, you put in your birthday. So I get that ahead of time. I have to do a little homework before we get into the session together. And then, so I'm focused on you. I'm in the listening. What happens is when we get on the session and I record everything, you're going to have, um, you're going to have a little cheat sheet of your own that you can mark down which animal is coming through and what important aspects are coming through like that animal sharing, whichever part. So we're going to look at your totem animal, the one that comes through with you based on your numerology. Then we're also gonna look at which animal is here based on your numerology to support you through 2019. So you start out with two animals that are gonna be with you through the whole year. And then we're gonna look at each month specifically, 12 monthly animal sponsors and what they're sharing with you. Having sessions with me, one of the parts that happens just automatically, it's just a part of my energetic field, is people receive a transmission of peace and clarity. So you're going to have this roadmap when we're done with the session that you can go back and look at, you know, because we're doing this now. And in August, you're going to look and you're going to say, oh, my goodness. I, would, I, I didn't understand the buffalo piece, but here it is. And you're going to have the recording so you can go back and look at that as well. So the beauty of this, and I love just doing, you know, on the spot readings like we did today, but the beauty of this is the animals that come through are based on your personal numerology. So I'm able to link that all together so that you come out with very specific messages and allies for you as you move through 2019 and we know that you know if 2018 was any kind of a trailer preview for what we'll be experiencing personally and collectively in 2019 we can use all the help we can get <laughs> mm -hmm. that's for sure absolutely thank you so again that is available for you to take a look at and it's a perfect time because we are starting to think about 2019 and what's going to happen and what we're going to do so take a take a you know, take a look at that special offer page, see how that resonates with you. And as you saw right now, <laughs> Anna Maria is very quick and very um, connected to you and your information and what you require, um, you know, to, to move forward, to, to talk about your direction, your animals, your, your connection with spirit, you know, you know, anything, pretty much anything comes up. Um, so was there anything else that I thought I saw something in the chat, but now I, for some reason I can't see it. I thought there was something else there. Yeah. Oh, I, that is so weird. I am not able to see any of the chat. That's, so there's a message from Don. Yeah, actually I see one here. Um, from Sue, oh my goodness, you're so accurate. I'm an open book and have been knowing I need better boundaries. A certain someone has been emulating all my gifts. I was sharing my own healing and is now talking down. Yeah, Raccoon, my new friend. Love you, Anna Maria. Right back at you, Sue. Valerie said, hi, Anna Maria and Alara. I know of some of my spirit animals, they come in dreams and in really different ways outside i'd love a message all right let's feel in here for you you know what's coming through the strongest for you this lemon tree um at first, it's so funny because at first I, I was like oh it's a fruit tree and i'm like oh yummy fruit and then it was like lemon i was like whoa okay um not what i was expecting at all but lemon itself is a phenomenal uh, fruit and the uplifting powers that it has and the ability to clean actually antibacterial kinds of activities. So call on that lemon tree and your ability just through your own energy to put out those higher vibrations that clean and transmute anything going on around you. You know, I, I can feel some of the negativity that you're exposed to. Psh, lemon tree, those people. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, maybe you can visualize tossing lemons in their direction. <laughs> Notice I didn't say throw lemons at them, toss them at them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love that. <laughs> oh, that's uh, funny. Your team's a hoot, Valerie. 
And there's a message from Nicole. Wow, that could have been from me. If time could, if time, could you verify if Owl and Cat are still my main guides? I feel like a shift is happening. Um, it's not that they're not your main guides. It's that you've got some folks coming on board. <laughs> so you're expanding your team is what I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. um, and it's big animals. Um, the big cats actually are coming. So they're kind of just adding extended family to the cat that's already there, but definitely big cats. Watch for them coming onto your team. Awesome. And Sue says, I'm getting this. Yay. So whether it's she's getting the message or she's getting the package <laughs> or she's getting it, whatever. Yay. Either way, we're excited. <laughs> <laughs> and Don says, I know I was rainbow, but is the... Is there an admiral message to help me right now? I've had a lot of health issues and lost my mom this year. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, yeah, John, let's check. Yeah, you know, it's mouse. I wouldn't have expected that. I was looking for a big bear hug or something for you, but it's mouse. And one of the lessons that mouse reminds us about is um, the details, you know, and I know with losing your mom, goodness, you must be up to your eyeballs in details of things to have to clear out. So allow Mouse to come in and help you determine what are the details that really need your attention and what are the ones that are just keeping you busy and really mired in the grief. I've always thought our way of dealing um, when somebody passes is so backwards. You know, we need this space, but instead we're thrown into legalities, you know, and, and those details. So call on Mouse to help you bring some ease and grace with that. And for um, the fertility moving forward, you know, when you experience a big loss like that, it can feel like it's never going to be the same. And of course it won't, it's going to be different, but to call in the blessings that come from having such an amazing ally on the other side in your life. Awesome. A little and animal with a big message for you. <laughs> Judy says, this is so interesting. I would love a reading if there's time. And remind me, I have to ask you a question. That's just a general question after. <laughs> <laughs> so it was Judy? Yeah. You know, Judy, I've got elephant coming through for you really strong. And one of the things about elephant, I mean, there's so many things. And here's, here's, Here's the thing about working with animal symbology. So there's a million books on it and websites and all of that, and they're really great. And I've got probably all of them. But what everybody teaches is that the true power of reading into what an animal has to tell you is your own connection. Because the way that we receive intuitive messages, they trigger old memories or old feelings or old emotions based on that animal that's showing up. So one person, you know, all of us might have a different kind of symbology related to elephants. So it's important for you to feel in first, what's the first thing that comes for you, then you can go and read the other ones. And for you, I would definitely encourage you to look deeper. The part that's coming through the strongest for you uh, with me is this part about the link to ancient wisdom. Mm -hmm. So the places, you know, Tapping into your inherent ancestral uh, knowingness, your ancestral memory, regardless of how you feel about your immediate ancestors <laughs> or your immediate family, look for the wisdom in your lineage and call on that and, and have Elephant help you with that. What do you think? <laughs> it's just his nose that comes through. <laughs> Um, so I just have a really quick question, totally off topic, but, you know, since I have you here, <laughs> I'm going to pick your brain for a second. Is it true or is it possible that when you have a pet and you have some sort of illness or something that they can take that on? Or am I crazy? No, you're not crazy. And how it works. So when animals are out in the wild, all of their senses are tuned into getting food, not being food, um, mating, all of these things. When they come to live with us, we take care of all of that for them. They don't have to worry about any of those things. So what they do learn is tuning into our energy. Uh, it behooves them because, you know, when we're in a good mood, we come home and we're like on the floor playing with them, handing out treats like we won the lottery. 
But on the day that, you know, we're in our head, we're like, go lay down go away, you know, whatever it is. And we asked, was like, what did I do? <laughs> <laughs> so they learn to tune into our energy naturally. <laughs> now contractually, when we look on the soul level, what my understanding is, is that they're living in our energy field. And just like in our bodies, if the energy gets stagnant in a particular place, it's going to show up, you know, as a dis-ease in a particular area of your body. Mm-hmm. When we can't, won't, or don't know how to move energy through our bodies, our animals take on. There's no way to ask them not to do it. They, it's just how they're wired. The way that we can help them is by being clean with our own energy and working on our own stuff because then they have less to take on. It's not uncommon for animals to show up with very similar or mirroring kinds of physical or even emotional or behavioral issues that mirrors what's going on for a human. Because mm. mm. I was, you know, because I was going to say, well, is there any way that I could like make, make sure that Neo doesn't take on <laughs> anything? Well, it, that- it's also like if we've had an animal that died of something, it's, mm. you don't want to go into, oh my God, I killed my cat. You know, like that's not what this right. is about. Right. And any of the guilt and any of that, those are low vibrations. Mm-hmm. And so they agreed, they signed up with us knowing that there's a myriad of outcomes and we may not ascend and get it and all of that, but they still signed up. And so they are willing co-conspirators in it. And again, if, the, if we really are wanting to spare them of whatever, then it is our responsibility to learn about what's going on. And when we see things happening in our animals, we can translate that to what it's here to show us and tell us. And then we can do our own inner work and shift the energy for both of us. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Thank you. No, because I just have a little, a little shoulder thing going on. And it's like, I don't want you know, poor Neil to suddenly not feel good, you know? It's like, I don't want him to take it on. <laughs> and it usually doesn't happen that quickly, you know, like, although sometimes it, around here on our ranch, it happens like really quick. If something shows up in an animal, we're like, okay, which one of us and what should we look at and how should we look at this? You know, so I've, I've had shoulder things before too. So, you know, those places where we think we got to take the whole world on and we're carrying the whole world. You know, so just be looking at that and releasing that. I know, I'm sure it doesn't apply to you. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> mm-hmm. As soon as you said it, it's like, oh my God. <laughs> I have got to let that go. I am not here to change everybody or to, you know, change the world or or whatever. People have their own choices. (laughs) Yes, exactly. Yeah, cool. Thank you. So, so, so my question brought on a few other questions around the same sort of thing. (laughs) I was just concerned about poor Neo, right? He's, he's just a baby. He's a sweet bear. (laughs) But we're motivated. You know, that's the beauty. This is that cosmic bait and switch with the animals because we're not motivated on our own to deal with our stuff. You know, we're like, yeah, 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 I know that, whatever, blah, 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 gloss over that, you know, put a lid on it, whatever. (laughs) But when it affects our animals, all of a sudden we're like front and center, I will do whatever. And they're like, okay, look within. And we're like, no, no, no. I meant I'd pay whatever. I'll do whatever you want. I don't really want to do anything. I don't want to shift anything or release any baggage. <laughs> oh, that is, oh that is, but it's so true. Oh my God. It's so true. Like, yeah, it's like, and, uh, and you know, he doesn't have anything. And I'm already like worried. It's like, ah, no, let's not do that. Let's, let's get this taken care of now. <laughs> All right, my yeah. husband's been telling me, go, call the doctor, call the doctor. I was like, ah, but now it's like, yep, okay, tomorrow. <laughs> Get this done. All right, cool. Um, yeah, so let me see if I could see if there's any other question here. <laughs> Dawn, you can have all Sue's mice. <laughs> oh, boy, where were we? Oh, and she says, so Dawn says, oh my, a mouse. My mom created this amazing little mouse village when I was a kid. Oh. I will... <laughs> right? Oh, I love it when they reach through and say hello in these amazing ways. I can imagine, like, Dawn, I'm going to tear up with you on this one. Oh, my goodness. 
Wow. Yeah, that's amazing. It's like, and Valerie says she's going to, she has issues with her daughter, but can't think of anyone else. So she's going to toss <laughs> some lemons to her daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe make her some lemonade or something like that. Infuse her with that lemon energy. <laughs> Awesome. Um, and so Sue was asking about, you know, her dogs have been howling consistently. And so now after I asked that question, she was like, uh, maybe that's why they're howling. Because she, she said, I've been so worried about my dogs. Maybe that's why they're howling. Maybe Sue has a health thing going on. I don't remember now. Well, I think. it's about speaking your truth. You know, they're trying to get you to use your authentic voice. Go out there and howl with them for a little bit. That moves some energy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And then Annie says that she ha I have hyperthyroid. My cat has hyper. I had energy healing and she became too low and I sl sl tested slightly high. She's 17 years with me. Hmm. So it's Take like, it. go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, let me just feel into that for a second. Well, the first thing... Um, we know like regulatory systems in our body. So we know plants can bring us back into balance. Um, CBD from the cannabis plant, all helpful, no high. That's one thing that can help uh, because it works with those systems that regulate in our body. So for both you and the cat, that could be very helpful. And you can email me if you need to know more about that. I actually have my own line of CBD for animals and people. Mm. Um, is, and is there a common theme? In, I'm not even, I don't even know what this means exactly. Emotional to lumps and bumps. I feed raw, no vaccines, chemical, etc. Wow, makes such sense. My voice and I have joined in and it feels awesome. Hmm. Yeah, Here. lumps and bumps. Emotionally, those pertain to the things that we've socked away, the things we didn't want to deal with, the things we pushed down, which, you know, there's only a bajillion. <laughs> in our lives that we've done that and with our animals again I know like kudos to you for doing the best you know like all of the high vibrating choices for the animals and our animals can still show up with issues and we're like what the heck is that about we have to remember that we have created over the last 50 years generations of animals that have different deficiencies now and that have different um their genetics have been altered in different ways now by what we've been feeding them, what we've been pumping them full of. So we have to take a look back for ourselves. First of all, where are the places that we're socking away toxicity? So thankfully the body's doing that because it's the body's way of, of managing that. But then also for yourself in the midst of all the wonderful things that you're doing, where is that toxicity still there? It's still calling for your attention. So do one of those whole life consciousness kind of audits. What are you putting on in and around your body? So for somebody who is having health issues, health challenges, or just, you know, being like completely stuck in their life, not knowing what, where they're going, what they're doing. Uh, I know a lot of people in my community are still wondering about their life purpose, you know, things like that. Would the special offer be um, helpful? Yeah, well, first of all, you get a little time with me. You get 30 minutes with me, and that's always helpful. And the second piece is this roadmap that helps you move through this year and connect, you know, in a real way with these guides from the animal realm and connecting in with your own blueprint that is laying out your rhythm so that you can begin to step in. And you can go into each month instead of like, oh, crap, what's going to happen? You know, I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop. You can be like, Oh my God, butterfly, you know, we looked at my numbers, butterflies coming through. Okay, this is about a metamorphosis. And, and if anything shows up that doesn't feel like metamorphosis, then I need to bring that energy of metamorphosis to it. Mm -hmm. So talk about those aspects of, you know, what would it be that would bring that to you? Yeah, awesome. Thank you. And so Annie was saying, yes, I'm on the CBD oil. I don't think we can get that here. I think it's only available in the States and maybe now in Canada online. Um, she said, yes, I'm on the CBD I oil. Ship, I, I actually ship worldwide and I've learned about discretion in shipping from other, grower, <coughs> from other growers <clears throat> as well. And so 
I've had 100% success rate shipping internationally. Oh, okay, cool. So if anyone is interested, I do it a little bit different than if I'm just sending it, say, to Albuquerque. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, she says she doesn't like it even in pill pockets. I need to get her capsules. So I'm assuming CBD oil is available in capsules too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. Awesome. And so Don is saying, so many bumps here too. I feel losing my mom has really brought all my mom issues to the forefront. Oh, yeah. I also just had surgery on my elbow from an old injury, and it feels as though that opened up a whole Pandora's box. Well, joints in the body have to do with transitions in life. So of course, you're going to have issues with your joints when you're up against this. You don't have a mom anymore here. You know, like that's a real thing for us 3D regardless of what our relationship was with them was it, if it was good bad and different and the truth about mother-daughter relationships is they're all of it wrapped up in one <laughs> all the time so that's going to come up and now it's about you stepping in and how are you going to mother yourself how can you be that mother to yourself and how can you bring that self-care here you know it's just you can do these changes and you've got everything you need within you. You just need to bring a little more tenderness and compassion, just like you offer to everybody else, but offer it to yourself. <laughs> yeah, we tend to forget ourselves, right? Always. <laughs> We're last on our list somehow for some reason. And now, you know, now Neil's even higher. <laughs> right. You just got devoted on your own <laughs> list. <laughs> I just got devoted. Yep, it's all good. Um, all right, anybody else have any questions, comments, feedback for Anna Maria about, uh, about anything about the elements, directions, um, what else are we talking about? <laughs> the animals, obviously about the tarot. Anybody else have something for Anna Maria and Astro, like standing over there goes, <laughs> he's like, I want to go play. You guys are no fun. <laughs> Exactly. I yeah, know. I know, right? And kind of, I'm looking at Neil too, and he's just lying there. And but I know it's, I'm going to have to take him out soon, you know. But um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I timed it perfectly. <laughs> yeah, I, I've timed these these shows perfectly. So you know, the email goes out a little bit later, but that's okay. Just you know. Um. All right. So cool. So if if nobody has anything else, and if I missed somebody, you know, I don't know why I was not able to see my chat before. <laughs> oh, Anna, can we see your dog? Oh, Astro, can you come here? They want to see you. Come here. They want to see you. You got to come all the way right here, though. Now he's gonna get shy. Watch the <laughs> screen. Come here. Come here. Can you see? Can I? Can Can you come up here and look? Can you see his face? Yeah. He's gonna try and run away. And the papa. A baby bear. <laughs> awesome. He's like, no, no, I don't want to be seen. <laughs> Not time for my close up. <laughs> mm. Oh, but he did it. He, he did it. He um, did it. He gave me a kiss. Oh, nice. He gave me a kiss. <laughs> so Nicole is going to try CBD for her neurotic pup. Is CBD oil okay for pets? It, well, you have to, you know, you really have to pay attention, just like any food that we're eating, we have to pay attention to how it is being grown and how it's being processed. And that was my whole thing. I had been working with people around the world. And the two things was one, first determining what kind of product they had, mm -hmm. <coughs> if it was even quality or not, because it's not regulated in any way right now. And that's frightening to me. Mm -hmm. um, and then the second thing is dosing people weren't either uh, using the right dosage or being consistent. One of the people that I work with, I was working with him because he had issues, physical issues. And one day his dog, his little chihuahua, is really afraid of storms, like crazy afraid of storms. So anyone who's got an anxiety ridden storm, crazy dog understands. <coughs> and a storm came and the dog was beside itself and, and he didn't know what to do. So he grabbed the, the CBD because he didn't know, and he gave the Chihuahua two drops. And it takes about 25 to 30 minutes for it to get into your system. He said in 30 minutes, the dog was sleeping in the middle of the storm. Wow. Sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> now, sometimes people experience the effects right away, like I said, within the 25 to 30 minutes. And some issues take more buildup in the body, things that are more related to PTSD, things like that we're finding, whether it's humans or animals, anything with a backbone 
has the endocannabinoid system that the CBD binds to that helps with the regulation, anti-inflammatory, all of these different pieces. So you sometimes have to start with low doses and then work up until you get what you need. And then you stay on that dose for like three months and then you can back off to a maintenance dose. So we're finding all sorts of things. And now that we're finally able to study, we're getting even clinical research to back up all the anecdotal evidence from, you know, years. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. No, I've heard wonderful things about CBD oil and, but you know, I knew it wasn't available in Canada because everybody that I saw that was Canadian was buying it in the U S you know? So it's like, okay, so it's not available in Canada yet. So, you know, now I think it is because it's, you know, but I don't know about Europe, but you said, you know, that you ship. So that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> not, that I, not that Neo needs anything yet. He's good. CBD is amazing. It helps me so much. Oh, good. And it's, it's not just for pets. CBD oil is for people too. It's so funny. You know, we talk, a lot of folks will get it for their animals and then they start taking it <laughs> or vice versa. Again, I've got, had a lot of little old ladies that are getting it and then their little old dogs are getting it too. <laughs> mm, wow. <laughs> good to know. So I was like, hmm. I may look into it's it and see. For, uh, um, you know, general well-being as well yeah. because it gives you the it, it triggers your immune system. Mm -hmm. That's why it's they're finding so much help with folks that are um, you know with cancer diagnoses and things to that effect. But just every day, every all of us animals get it here on the ranch every day. Everybody's oh, wow. getting the CBD. <laughs> oh wow, awesome! Um, so before we go, is there anything else that Portal Neil would like to? Tell me anything I need to know from Neo. <laughs> Let's check in with him. Yeah, you know, the biggest thing, like, like I said, his like he's he's serious and he's concerned. He's very serious about things. So the main thing we just want to let him know because he's not sure. Like, is this my final stop? Like, there's some question for him. Not because you've done anything, just because he's a very serious pup and he's thinking this way. Mm -hmm. So just keep reassuring him that this is the end stop. This yeah. is where you get to stay forever. And we are a team and I would love to collaborate with you because I'm sure he's got lots of cool things to tell you. Uh, and that's so funny because I'm so serious. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> so you two have to remind each other to play. <laughs> right. And, and that's one of the things that I was, uh, I was saying on another call. It's like, you know, I'm so serious. So, you know, a puppy is great because now I get a chance to play more. And then you got a serious puppy. I got a serious puppy. <laughs> oh well. Oh yeah. I'll I'll encourage him to play and and you know so it'll be a joint effort. We'll both, both heal your inner puppies. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh my goodness, that's so funny. Um, awesome. Good. So the special offer is available. I'll put the link in the email. It's all. It'll also be on the live page if you come back to the live page for other shows or whatever. You'll see it there um, on YouTube and on the podcast. You'll see it there as well. So please do take a look at it. And this is a perfect time, like I said, because we're moving into 2019. So some of us are already thinking about what 2019 is going to be like and how we can make it even better. Yes. <laughs> yes. Right? So, Absolutely. Yeah. So um, oh, I'm, so, I'm so grateful to, to you, Anna Maria, for all the work that you've been doing, working with the animals, helping people with their pets and animals. and Everything else. I mean, I, I've known you for since 2013, and you're, you know, you you're amazing. And I just love how you're constantly creating and doing more and more and more, and being of such service to, to you know, the pets and to the people. So thank you so so much. It's just I'm, I'm always so in awe and so uh, um, in gratitude for the the gifts that you bring and what you share with everybody. So thank you. Oh, thank you. I'm receiving that. And thank you for this amazing platform. Again, it's so great to have places where we can come together in like-hearted ways and talk about things and know that we're not nuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're not crazy. Well, maybe we're nuts, but not because of that. <laughs> yes, exactly. And thank you so much, everyone, for your questions and your comments and your feedback. So appreciate it. Oh, look, Nancy's pet. Oh, cute puppy. That's a oh. face. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take a uh, watch out for the email that, you know, we'll, we'll have the, the YouTube link and everything else. <laughs> Nicole says, I would not peg you as serious. Oh, <laughs> thank you.
I, I, I will, you know, remind myself not to be so serious. That, yeah, that, this is why I did the video too, because I, it's much more engaging and I have more fun. See, it's playful, much more playful. <laughs> All right, thank you, thank you, thank you. And until next time, continue to live your life filled with joy, peace, love, abundance, and happiness. Sending you all much love and blessings always. Bye for now.